Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the table is by Maxime Sardif and uh, Sphere Games, and it's called Mini Diversity, or Diversity. It is a game for one to seven players, eight and up, about 15 to 20 minutes plays about right. We actually played this live on our streams, so if you're check, checking it out on Unfiltered Gamer on the Facebook. Uh, in the game Mini Diversity, you're going to be basically getting a hand of cards that you can't look at, as well as putting down a track for all the different animals in the reef. Now, those animals are all not endangered and they're also not plentiful however the game is going to be changing that as well as different islands around the reef that will either be an island a beautiful little area uh, oasis or they'll be industrialized by the corporations and turned into hotels our objective is of course to keep the islands safe as well as to preserve the life in the reef and you're going to be trying to do that by accomplishing goals and your main goal is going to be trying to keep the fish uh, 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 safe. And if you can do that by making sure that they're plentiful and that the different cities and different you know, technology people are not trying to destroy them, you'll win the game. But if certain animals go extinct or all of the different islands become resorts, you're going to lose the game. But it differs depending on not only uh, the difficulty level, but how you want to play the game as well, because there's also different variants of play. Anyway, let's go ahead and show you down below what the game looks like and how to play. So as you can see, this is mini diversity and everything that is included. It's going to start with the six different islands along with six different sets of animals, which is a total of 12. And not only that, but little tokens for these animals, they can actually show that they're being uh, plentiful or they're becoming extinct, as well as the fact that they can go off of the board and be extinct or be completely safe. Uh, over here are corporation cards, and these things are going to affect the field of play in a negative way. And then you have the mini diversity cards, which are going to hopefully help the situation in some way. Every player is going to get a random random one of these guys here, or depending on the variant, you can actually play with all of them, but they all have a special ability that can be used on their turn, they do different things, and it tells you right over here what they do exactly, whether it's looking at another player's hand, or playing a card from your hand as an additional play, uh, moving the uh, different cards on the top here in, in a certain order, so on and so forth though, but these are going to be helpful, and when you use them, you go ahead and flick them, flip them over. Uh, let's go ahead and put these guys all right here, and as you can see, they have a flippy side, so they actually go from island to hotel, which we don't want to happen. To start the game off, in a two-player game, you draw four of these cards, and you'll always have four in your hand, and in any more players, you're going to be having three cards in your hand. We'll just go ahead and show you a two-player game by revealing these cards face down, like this, for each of the players. And remember, when you're playing the game, you're never looking at them yourself, so you're always going to be holding them the other way, so that you never see them, but everyone else does. So you can see these cards, but I can not. The first thing that's going to happen after it's all set up now, which it is, is you're going to flip over one of these cards here and do what it says. Sometimes it'll just be one specific thing that happens, and sometimes it will be multiple things depending on the type of card it is. In this case, though, you're just going to simply take a card from the top of the deck of the diversity card deck and place it in the discard pile. Whatever that card is, is going to move that specific animal into the red area here. Um, or if they were in green, it would just move it down one. So it's basically going to be always negative. After that has occurred, you're going to simply go ahead and play them in the discard pile. And then the one player is going to take their turn. So we'll start with this player here. Now this player has three options. This player can first of all go ahead and tell this player what to do, uh, what cards are in their hand, or uh, this player can simply play a card from their hand and reveal it face up. And then the final thing they can do is flip over one of these from this side to this side. To start off with, we'll just go ahead and try and progress the track here because we know that they're all mostly all well, pretty much safe. So I'll flip over one of these guys here. This is the sea slug, so that will be moving that guy like that. This will get discarded, and then a new card will come up and then the deck is going to take their turn up oh, another thing is going to happen and what is it oh no crabs crabs this player now has the options to do certain things. Uh, maybe in this case, uh, he will go ahead and use one of his other actions, which is to tell this player exactly what cards are in their hand. So this is so without without the player looking, uh, this player is going to say, okay, this is the manta ray, this is the uh, sea turtle, this is the octopus, and this is the star. And so that is one specific full action they can take. Uh, after that is done, once again, the next player is going to get to take their turn. But before that, the corporations will do certain things. And this in this case, they're going to go ahead and have to discard a card from their hand. Up uh, the octopus. Now remember, I. I actually know what cards are in my hand now, so I can choose whatever one I want to uh, to move. So I, I know that this is a turtle, so maybe I want to use the turtle, or maybe I don't because it's it's uh, going to be becoming endangered, so this is actually one I want to save. Or actually, it's, it's endangered right now, it'll actually become extinct, so I don't want that to happen. So maybe I'll move the turtle so I don't use it. Maybe I'll just go ahead and use the octopus, and in that case it's going to go like that. Drawing another card, you're always going to have the number of cards in your hand. And then it's my turn once again, and like I said, I know exactly what's in my hand, other than the new one I just 
misconstrue, so maybe I'll turn it to the side. But yeah, so that's the idea of the game. So uh, this one also will tell you that you're going to be moving these cards like this. So the yellow and the blue are actually going to turn into hotels. So you get two for one, which is not very good, but uh, that's how it works with corporations. They can be kind of evil. And you're going to be playing based on the difficulty that you choose, or like I like to play, just try and see how far you can get, uh, if you can actually get far enough. It tells you on here whether you're playing as the open water divers, which is you're trying to have uh, five species saved before the corporation extincts five species, or, or get, it gets these islands to turn into the hotels. But you can also play Poseidon if you want, or try to get there. Divers win if you can save nine species, or the corporations win if they can extinct three. So that's the basic aspects of the game. There's also, like I said, the additional gameplay, which I talked about one of them being that you can play with all the all the divers in the game, which you can basically use as, utilize as special abilities. But anyway, yeah, that's the idea of the game. Try and save the species before the corporations get to them, or try and, uh, as well as trying to keep these uh, from being turned into industrial wastelands as long as you possibly can. All right, let's come up and talk about, talk about it. So just before we get started with the review, let's talk about two little caveats. One caveat is if this deck runs out, the game is also over and uh, just just be aware of that. So there's only so many cards you're gonna be able to draw before it's too late. And the other thing is when you flip over this uh, this this city area that was once an island back to an island, it's also gonna cost you a card to discard from your hand. Uh, that is one of the di diversity cards. So just so that you're aware. So what do I think about this game? This game is really, really fun. This is basically what Outpost Siberia, uh, Serbia, Siberia, Siberia, and the Amazon game should have been. Uh, it is the idea is you're trying to rescue the species by playing cards. It has a little bit of a blind man's bluff aspect to it, but it's all cooperative and it's very engaging and it's very challenging, but not to the point where it's overly challenging or overly complicated. You have the three actions, which is to tell people what's in their hand or to simply flip over one of the islands or to play a card in hopes to get that specific species off of the endangered species list into the plentiful area. And uh, that's, that's it. That's all you got to do. The corporations are very difficult, though, because some of the cards are going to be uh, rather simple, which is just one for one action. I get to play one card face up. They get to play one card uh, uh, from the deck, putting, uh, putting it back. So you can try and counter what they're trying to do. Uh, other times, it's going to be two actions they get to do, well, <laughs> which can be very, very devastating. And then, of course, you have the, city, uh, the, uh, the islands. And th these can actually be a benefit to you as long as they don't instantly make you lose the game. Uh, so there's a lot of strategy in this game which is what I really like about it. First of all, the islands themselves are going to give you those that, that counterbalance to the cards. If you draw a yellow and a green and a yellow and a blue, it'll just be those three islands that flip over. The yellow doesn't flip over twice. So if then you get a green and a blue card, those ones will still already flipped over. So it'll be a free turn for you as divers. Utilizing uh, special abilities like looking at the top of that deck is going to be very beneficial because you'll know, you need to know when to turn those islands over to save you from losing the game. Also, telling people what cards they have in their hand at what point is going to be very important because certain cards will be called dead cards at the end of the game based on what those, those species are in danger or, 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 I mean, extinct or saved. If the species are saved or uh, extinct, they're gone forever. So those cards will also be dead. So if clams have been extinct, this card is no longer a good card to play face up on the table. It'll actually make you lose your turn. So being able to know what this card is and discarding it to turn over an island is going to be very, very useful. And not only that, but sometimes the corporation will have us discard cards from our hand and make those species suffer. But if the species is already saved, I can discard that card and it won't hurt us in any way. And there is so much more strategy than I thought there would be in, in, in all of that. Knowing when to utilize specific abilities and how to play. And as you play cooperatively, you're going to get better as a team. And there's never going to be an alpha gamer because you frankly can't say anything when you're playing this game. There's no talking, no table talk. The only time you can actually talk is when you're radioing in to tell people what cards are in their hand. You can't tell people what to play. So it gets rid of that aspect of the game in a cooperative game, which people don't like playing cooperative games a lot of the time because there is that table presence of an alpha gamer. This just gets rid of that. It's small. It's a low cost game. And there's a ton of fun in it with tons of different little variables and a couple of different very variations on how to play, which is nice as well. We played this multiple times on our live stream, which I said previously, and I had a good time every time it played really well, two, three and four players you can play up to seven though which is enough for a big group it can be a filler game or it can be a game of an entire night of gaming trying to get the best of uh of the corporations in this game uh overall this is an excellent game and we as a group decided that this is getting our seal of excellence and our approval do go ahead and check out uh, mini diversity if it sounds like something interesting to you we really really enjoyed this title